सपोज वी आर मेकिंग क्रिकेट टीम ऑफ ऑल ऑफ दिस फॉर एग्जाम्पल हु एम एस धोनी ऑफ आवर टीम एम एस धोनी डेफिनेटली डॉक्टर रंजी ऑफ पैथोलॉजी हु विराट कोहली ऑफ आवर टीम विराट कोहली ऑफ कोर्स जी आर जी सर स्टूडेंट्स एम सेल्स गेव मी दिस टाइटल ऑफ गूगल एंड ए आई ऑफ फिजियोलॉजी दिस डेज यू डोंट नो दिस गाय ये जहाँ कहीं कोई उम्मीद भी नहीं देती ना वहाँ पे ये उम्मीद निकाल के अपने जलवे दिखाता है एंड इन दॉल ई सॉ ऑल दैट मेला ऑफ स्टूडेंट एंड ई सेड दीज आर दी अनसक्सेसफुल चिल्ड्रन ऑफ सक्सेसफुल पेरेंट्स दैट वॉज इज कोर्ट It hit me very hard. That sentence hit me hard. He had a philosophy in life that subject is not important. What you do in the subject is more important. That's Doctor right. is one person who has shaped my career in a way. In India, three fields get instant recognition: politics, cricket, and Bollywood. I'll, I'll skip this question. It's idiotic question. I was aspiring to be a politician, I think, a political <laughs> worker. But I believe it's a it's a too much of a stress for students. Hi guys, welcome to Beyond the White Coat podcast. This is Dr. Vishal Gabale, and today we have a very special guest with us, Dr. Vivek Nalgundi sir. Hello sir. Sir is a professor of physiology at the Vaipatan Hospital and content creator at Phoenix Fola Medical Education Team. I am very happy to introduce you to my audience, sir. But before starting the podcast, I would like to thank Prep Ladder for their immense support and always backing this journey as a podcaster. Thank you so much. So we are very glad to welcome you today in this podcast, sir. Sir has an immense experience of around twenty-eight years in the physiology. Let's ask the first thing, sir. Do you like physiology? <laughs> <laughs> It is like, do you like breathing? Ah, oh, yeah. The answer is like, uh, yes. sir. Do you like breathing? I'll, I'll skip this question. It's idiotic question. No, but this is good. The answer is good. <laughs> answer, <laughs> this question is absolutely rubbish. No, no, no. Challenge. No. Are some people uh-huh. they don't like their Profession. Okay. They are there like a wrong soul trapped in the wrong body. Yes, sir. Yes. They hate it. Sir, what is the what are the few things that you like most in this physiology subject? Uh, what I like about the subject is that this subject comes in every other subject of medicine. Yes, sir. I mean, I'll give you the example. Forensic. Does it have any physiology in it? I can sh- tell you. Tetrodotoxin is a uh, that. Uh, very strong nerve gas poison yes sir and the physiology connection is it blocks which channel sodium channel potassium channel calcium channel chloride channel yes. and that is how it works that was the mcq asked mm-hmm. so application of physiology in forensic yes csf pressure is it anesthesia or physiology it is physiology yes. and used in anesthesia intraocular pressure uh, ophthalm or physiology yes. everywhere physiology has lots of application so i like all the aspects of this subject okay. i i i just think uh, preventive and co- social medicine community medicine <laughs> does not have that much application of physiology you yes. name the subject and i can tell you the physiology involved in that subject yes sir sir uh, let's start with your childhood at the start of the podcast so where were you based and uh, i mean like when did you aspire to be a doctor in your life ah uh, um we belong to the marathwada region of maharashtra um well uh, but uh, my parents they shifted to mumbai so i was born and brought up in mumbai i have uh, hardly any connection with usmanabad or marathwada as such we go there once in a while but uh, uh, we were four siblings born and brought up in uh, mumbai and uh, yeah i mean i i am the last one among the four of us yes uh, so i was okay in studies good actually mm-hmm. <laughs> i was the topper in my school yeah but then in the junior college ruparel college that was not uh, it was not, not such a happy hunting ground for me because uh, i was not so good that was college and uh, you know first time college experience um so my my scores were not so good but then by the toward the end of 12th standard again i picked up and i got good marks in bio uh, pcb which was just good enough to get me admission in medicine great sir great but at what point you decided to be a doctor sir i didn't decide this <laughs> my <laughs> uh, actually um, my parents decided okay. my father had this uh, long standing wish of becoming a doctor himself yes and therefore um, naturally he passed on that in us his his children 
So. Uh, but uh, you know, we tried for the eldest sister. She could not get admission in medicine. Finally, I could get, and that is how it was. Just mere happenstance that uh, I got the marks. Yes. I can take in medicine, and yes. father wanted at least one of his children to be in medicine. That's how I got in medicine. Great, great to know about that, sir. And we are very lucky also that you took medicine, <laughs> and now we are with you here, right? Okay. Yes, sir. But uh, around in the childhood, there must be some wildest dreams, right? We all have that wild dream. Some want to be pilot in the childhood, or some want to be astronaut. Some want to be someone else, right? So, what was your dream at the childhood? I was good at speech making. Okay. Uh, I was a. I had good oratorial skills. So I was aspiring to be a politician. I think a political <laughs> worker, politician, social yes. worker, maybe that that uh, category. Yes. Um, and. Uh, Yeah, there were good politicians who were uh, really the role models in yes. those days. So yes, uh, I belong to that generation where uh, youngsters did want to come into the politics. Nowadays, as a as a as a tool of social service. Yeah. Yes. Nowadays, the, the it has changed and people have certain dislike towards politics yes. for whatever reason. Yes, sir. And sir, at that period. who were your political idols means you, whom you wanted to be like um the quick name that comes to my mind is atal bihari vajpayee okay natural orator yes and everything that comes from the heart yes and therefore there is no making up of things or making up of the words as such words and phrases would flow naturally yes so um yeah i tried to imitate him a lot in those days yes. using his phraseology yes using his uh, uh gesturing yes etc and in maharashtra in those days one more speaker was very popular and that is uh, pradyapak uh, shivaji rao bhosle okay uh, he was the vice chancellor of a university in maharashtra and a very very famous orator his speeches on vivekananda were really inspiring Yes. so that natural flow of speech i learned from these speakers really great to know about that sir all right sir my next question is what were your hobbies mainly in the childhood sir i was a i was an all round all rounder okay and uh, you know these things cannot be i mean there can't be lies about it because now the days nowadays world has become so small yes everything can be verified yes sir totally there are people from my school days and anyone can verify uh, these things from them yes. and my lie will be exposed if at all it's a lie <laughs> but i was a i was a good cricket player yes, in my school yes, uh, uh, i played for the school you were batter or bowler sir uh, i was a bowler okay and uh, yeah i used to uh, days, those days i remember we used to go to azad maidan oh. or uh, shivaji park also at times or dadkar stadium uh, matunga and we used to play matches uh, 25 overs uh, aside mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so kabaddi i was a part of uh, kabaddi team of the school uh, table tennis i used to play well then uh, chess also i represented my college school and college so overall i did play uh, quite a few uh, sports outdoor sports and indoor games i used to play tabla i yeah, uh, yeah i learned it from gandhar mahavidyalaya and in those days see now uh, people would not realize the importance of having a program on television yes those days there was only doordarshan yeah so having your program on doordarshan was like a festival in the family because yeah that means you have arrived yes nowadays everybody has got phone and everybody becomes a broadcaster so yes. everybody is on some kind of a media yeah but in those days having program on uh, radio and television was a mark of some kind of a success or achievement yeah so i had actually uh, three programs on television two on uh, radio uh, centers about so, yes. tabla tabla about, yeah okay. about playing tabla right after that i played flute also uh, trumpet mm. i played all the musical instruments actually yeah so, so but so, out of all these hobbies you have mm. which hobby you will place highest sir tabla tabla will be yeah playing highest. tabla i al almost learned it for 8 9 years okay 
and i had reached uh, you know gandharva mahavidyalay gives certificates and take conduct exams so i almost reached the final uh, tabla visharad stage okay great so great, yeah great that was know. one and uh, playing cricket these two were the topmost uh, of my uh, yes, sir. yes sir okay sir great to know about your tabla journey sir now my next question is what difficulties you faced in the childhood sir difficulties um well to be honest uh my parents progressed uh, materialistic progress in life as they say after my birth mm -hmm. so i was i was a good omen in the family in that yeah. sense and therefore uh, yeah i i got i got all the privileges in the family yes uh, so no difficulties as such except health reasons health grounds okay uh, yeah i used to have pain in abdomen which went undiagnosed for years okay nobody could diagnose it because oh, those days the only investigation was ultrasound yes nothing else so um, it could not pick up anything yes. but i still used to suffer a lot every year at least two or three attacks of pain in abdomen severe pain okay. lasting for two or three days mm -hmm. it was self limiting yeah. so it will but still it was a hell yes so that was the only uh, impediment in my entire journey mm -hmm. i guess uh thank you for sharing your uh, problems and per se health related issues but uh, we all face some sort of difficulties and coming throughout all these difficulties and getting into go the institution and now being a professor of physiology is really a commendable job you have done sir but i've heard that in your mbbs days in your mbbs admission you had certain life changing moment that basically changed your view toward the life what was that sir yes um look uh i got admission in in the private medical college or private setup rmc of pmt yes. and it's a it's a fantastic institute i tell you uh, research and uh, all the medical college facilities are very good over there and that was among the first three medical colleges in india uh, or private colleges i would say uh, in maharashtra karad then this loni and amravati only three colleges they all started in 1984 and i am the student of 1980 batch uh, 88 batch sorry so only 4 years old uh, so culture of private medical colleges was very new those yes. days and i i lost out by just one mark in bi biology and therefore i had to take admission uh, there on merit of course um uh, but uh, you know when we had gathered there for counseling there were students and pa their parents and my father was accompanying me and in the hall he saw all that uh, mela of students and uh, parents and he said these are the unsuccessful children of successful parents oh. that was his quote i said why unsuccessful why are we un because see parents are successful they are uh, successful in life so they could earn and pay the private college fees yes sir and this is not a comment on private college as such because private colleges are also extremely well loni college is among the best in india in among the private setups and where i am working right now yes, uh, the dy patel that to i rate it as topmost by any standard yes sir but that that comment coming to back to that comment na my father said what are the topmost uh, uh, colleges in india what are the topmost universities aims yes uh, inis you know institute of national importance or government medical colleges they are seen to be the topper top colleges and everybody uh, competes for admission in those colleges okay you had all the resources available to you by virtue of your parents being there yes. parents are successful they could provide you anything but could you get admission uh, in that topmost uh, university or college you your rank was low that is why you had to take admission in a private college this is not a comment i repeat this is not a comment on a private college as such private colleges are also good but topmost colleges like aims jipmer or delhi colleges maharashtra km these are said to be top by any standard no yes so if you have all the resources with you why couldn't you get admission in those colleges yes and that by that uh, uh, he meant 
I mean, when he said this, that uh, you are unsuccessful kids of successful parents. It yeah. hit me very hard. Okay. That sentence hit me hard. Yeah. And that very moment I decided that from, I, I promised him that from, this is the last that you are paying my fees mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, yeah. but after this, I am going to take care of myself. Okay. I will take admission uh, henceforth on my own merit and uh, I will pursue the career on my own uh, steam. Mm -hmm. So that was a life changing moment after, I mean, uh, yes, that was the thing mm -hmm. that changed my perspective, perspective towards life. Yes. That parents are for us. Every every kid thinks parents are for us. They earn money for whom? For us. Yes. So what is the big deal if they are spending money on us? Yes, sir. That is what every person feels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that should not happen actually. Parents are there to up to a certain age and stage. After that, you have to do it for yourself. Thanks for sharing uh, this life-changing event for us, sir. It's really inspiring for all of us. I just wanted to ask one more thing. Uh, during your MBBS days, how was your approach to MBBS? Were you very studious or you were indulged in a lot of extracurricular activities as well? <laughs> uh, first year just came and went by. Yeah. Which is what happens with every medical student, yeah. I think. Yes. I mean, the initial six months are like, oh, I am a future doctor and I've got admission in medicine. And therefore, that first year just came and went off and I could not realize that I am not, not good enough for medical means not, I'm not studying properly. So, uh, then after that second year in the midst of, in the middle of second year, I realized that I have made a certain promise to my parents. I have to study and I have to get ad, uh, admission in the PG on my own merit. So from that point onward, uh, the, my performance increased better. Yeah. Yeah. And what was your favorite subject in the MBBS days, sir? My subject was the surgery, actually. General surgery was my favorite subject. I had uh, read the Love and Bailey at least 15, 20 times. Oh, God. Those days. I one would not believe this. Yes. But uh, yeah, it's a fact. I can tell you the signs even now. I mean, the signs of acute pancreatitis. The bait sign yes. or everything, you know, uh, that's uh, related to the general surgery. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that was, I, I scored very well in general surgery actually. Yes. I, I was the topper in university for general surgery or at least theory marks were top marks. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I got, at the same time, I flunked in the OBGY practical. Mm -hmm. And that was a very big setback for me. Because mm. uh, those days, PG admissions were based on the final year marks. Mm. So if I want a admission in surgery, yeah. but if I got attempt in some other subject, then there was three or five percent deduction in the marks. Oh. So my rank fell, and then I gave OBGY exam after six months. I cleared, and even in spite of the attempt, those marks were good enough to give me the admission in D ortho. So okay. I joined, took the ortho in BJ. Okay. I joined there for about seven days and then came back. Okay. Why did you drop out, sir? Uh, yeah, because uh, my father said you have been outside uh, the family uh, or you are staying out for five years. Then again, you are going to go out and stay for two more years. He had a philosophy in life that uh, subject is not important. What you do in the subject is more important. Okay. I mean, he gave me the example. Suppose you took uh, radiology or any topmost branch or ortho and you then earn very well. That is by virtue of that branch. Yes. The branch is earning branch and so you are a doctor in that and you are earning. No big deal. Yes. You took any branch, if you take any branch and make a mark for yourself, I mean, make a career for yourself and make it a big career, that means then it's your, the, it goes to your credit. Yeah. So take any subject and uh, do all the hard work. Yes. That, that was his philosophy. So yeah. I thought, yes, fine, the ortho or I take whatever subject, yeah. but I have to make a career out of my own hard work. Yes. And this is not to say that uh, in the best branches, people don't do any hard work. 
of course they have done all the hard work in the during the admission itself that is why they were top rankers and therefore they got got the mark admission in ms ortho etc so obviously they are doing all the hard work this is only a philosophy of my parents yes. take any branch and make it uh, big for yourself yes that was it yeah thank you sir i think most of the students have that bitter experience of getting failed in the mbbs days right sir Absolutely. all of the mbbs students are from the top shelf of the medical uh, schools basically are toppers in the schools and coming to the medical colleges all know their places right sir okay sir my next question is at what point you opted for physiology what is your journey to opt physiology and how you tend to become teacher then um i always had a uh, good oratorial skills and uh, i am a spontaneous speaker an extempore speaker so teaching came naturally to me from the undergraduate days i used to teach my juniors my notes also were very popular among my juniors yes. so teaching part then came naturally to me and physiology yes uh, it requires certain understanding of the subject and it requires uh, conceptual understanding thinking so i was good at that uh, from the beginning so uh, i was good in the physiology branch yeah i did well there only thing is that because of this speech oratorial skills or whatever you may call it everybody used to think that i would have joined politics i don't know uh, that was one thing that that was a change in my career or change in my uh, uh, thought process yeah from a social orientation or social service type of a person okay. to a teacher which is a different type of service to yes. the society okay sir in the next segment it is called as imagination and all of our audience loves this segment because in this segment i give you imaginary scenarios and how would you react in that scenario so the first question is many student face ragging in their ujd or pjd perhaps which is absolutely wrong thing and we are not promoting any sort of that but if you get into ragging in some part in your ujd days so what you how would you react at this face i will surrender probably surrender <laughs> means i will, i'm not a rebel yeah. as such yes uh, because uh, my philosophy which my father gave to me is that you conserve your energy on and apply it on the constructive work yes and rebellious being rebellious is good part of your personality but it's not always worthwhile yeah um that uh, you will be a rebel or you will complain to the authorities that's fine ragging is illegal and it's illegitimate and everything is fine but then if it's just for the sake of introduction with your seniors and then you are fine for next four and a half years that's okay as but, far as it is not damaging your personal yeah. uh, means your mindset or any yes, your yes, personal yes. thing yes right? it's not ragging it's just introduction ragging is illegal it should not be promoted it should not one should not surrender to it also mm-hmm. uh yeah the idealistic position is don't surrender to it report it to the authorities that's the most ideal situation or or ideal thing to do but yes um, i mean yeah talking of which if it is just a introduction then yeah it's okay but at any sort we should not tolerate it according to me and definitely you should report to your superiors but at at those previous days i guess the uh, regulations and guidelines against the dragging were not so not strict, so, strict. Not right? so, so it has to happen usually yeah, yes it, uh, right the next question in this interesting imagination section is now after mbbs you are getting the opportunity to do anything other than medicine right suppose you are being politician right sir so what changes you would bring into the society or into the uh, medical education currently uh these are two questions actually okay. two imaginations one for the entire society yeah. and one for the uh, medical, medical students okay. yes for the society there are so many things that are to that need to work out work on yeah let's focus on the medical education ah right? yes yeah. yes medical education uh, i would make it more student friendly okay that's the one thing 
I what I mean here is every two years there is some new thing brought up by the authorities. Yeah. And then students have to students and teachers have to adjust to it, adapt to it. Second thing is uh, there are these entrance exams. Currently there is NEET PG. Yes. For which there are nineteen subjects, and students have to learn all those nineteen subjects for their NEET PG. Yes, sir. And all the students are doing that in their final years and internship. Yes. Now, how uh, see? I am a teacher at NEET PG for uh, for NEET PG uh, en- entrance exams. I teach there. Yes, sir. But I believe it's a it's a too much of a stress for students. Okay. And uh, they are missing out on their college uh, activity, and they are just preparing for NEET PG. So their two years of their active young lives are completely devoted to this NEET PG, PG thing. Preparation. Yeah. And next was a good idea. So if I was, uh, if I had some kind of a power okay. over this, I would have brought in next as early as possible, mm-hmm. because next exam is nothing but final year exams, mm-hmm. uh, and you will get uh, PG admission on the basis of your final year marks, yes. which is what the case previously also. We got admissions on the basis of our final year final marks only. Marks only. Same thing will happen. Only thing is now that the final year exam will not be conducted by your own college, but will be a centralized process, and that it's a very ideal kind of a scenario. Because see, there used to be NMC or MCI inspections previously, and they would inspect your uh, chairs in the demo room and uh, colors of your curtains, etc. In the medical colleges, mm-hmm. and it, it it was a. it was an unintentional harassment for the colleges next was going to change that next is going to change that yes. because they say now we will not uh, we will not inspect your process we will inspect your product yeah we will take exam of that and we'll see how the how, how much that product is uh, good enough yes so that's a good idea they should yes. bring in as early as possible yes next question is in this imagination segment is if you get an option to do residency in any other branch let's say top 3 branches so which top 3 branches would it be i know the first would be general surgery as you told you like no but that's surgery. gone okay <laughs> uh see yeah. your question was um kala sapeksha question yes back then what you what would have would I, what uh, was my favorite subject was yes. general surgery yes it was yes but over the last 28 28 years yes uh i am into physiology yeah. which did not does not require psychomotor skills yeah those skills are required for a surgeon what i require is more of a cognitive skills yes and therefore now if i want to do a res- residency it will be any branch that requires the cognitive skills it could mm. be psychiatry it could be general medicine back then again you, if you go into the mbbs days ah. you don't know anything about the physiology ah. suppose mm. you're going into the past and then you have the options lot of options right for uh, residency and what would it be sir at that right. point no i would I, now in last so many almost three decades mm-hmm. yes. my life has changed so much and deep dived into the physiology okay that now i can't think of anything else yeah i am literally breathing physiology every moment yeah. so i can't think of anything else now okay and suppose if you're not getting any opportunity in medical field it's again just the other question in the imaginary scenarios so if you don't get any opportunity in the medical field after your mbbs what would you have done after mbbs or mbbs is a medical field yeah so no after mbbs you are not getting any other opportunity in the medical field Okay. So what other than medicine you would have chosen? I would have then gone into politics. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That was my, uh, that was my first love actually. Uh, yeah. My first passion. Okay. Uh, politics as a, as a tool for, the societal change, societal upbringing. Okay. Social social service. Yes. So yes, I would have definitely gone there. Next question is pretty interesting for all of the viewers. So suppose we are creating a cricket league of all the teachers, right? 
who teaches for the uh, medical field, medical students basically. Need PG. And need PG students. Haan. And as you have worked in the all the basically Bhatia dams, Red Ladder. I have worked for every PWB institute PWB that you can PWB. name. Yes, sir. Uh, starting with PGDIMS. And uh, dams, Bhatia. In fact, I started my NEET PG career with Vidya Sagar. That yes. was the first class in Maharashtra. Okay. And uh, it used to have 12 batches in Mumbai, 6 batches in Pune. And uh, it was a it was a bislary of water, you know. Yeah. We say, we don't say mineral water. <laughs> bislary ka water de do. Exactly. So actually, bislary is a brand. Yeah. But mineral water is so much equated like with bislary that... Yes, uh, yes, yes. So similarly... People used to say, you have done MBBS, have you joined Vidya Sagar? Mm-hmm. They actually mean, have you joined any PG entrance coaching? Yes. But PG entrance coaching was equal to Vidya Sagar back those okay. days. And that is where I started the career of this PG, uh, need PG coaching. PG, yeah. So my next question in this imagination series is definitely going to be favorite of all of our audience. Because in that we are going to include all the faculties throughout the country. For example, uh, Bhatia classes, then uh, dams classes, your prep ladder and even also uh, PW made. So suppose we are making cricket team of all of this. So who would be the captain and for example, who would be MS Dhoni of our team? MS Dhoni, definitely Dr. Ranjit of Pathology. Yes. I have seen, interacted with so many faculties. Uh, Dr. Ranjit is leading the PW Meded. Yes. Uh, he is the coordinator, faculty coordinator. He has the Dhoni-like qualities. Yes, sir. Yeah. Calm and composed. Yes, sir. And tremendous ability to listen to people. Yes. That's something which, uh, I mean, I adore that person. Admire that person, really. Yes, sir. Okay. And second would be, sir, who would be our mentor to the team? Like Sachin Tendulkar is for Mumbai Indians, right? Haan. So, who would be mentor for our team? Who mentor would be Dr. Dipanchu. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he's the founder of Pet Ladder, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, I owe my career to Dr. Dipanchu. Yes. Initially, it was Dr. Girish Karmarkar from DAMS who gave me the opportunity. Yes. And after that, uh, Dr. Dipanchu. And Sahil, his brother, yes. uh, Dipanchu Goel, he gave me the opportunity mm-hmm. to grow. He gave me the freedom mm-hmm. to record the content. He publicized it well. Yes. So all my recent uh, growth in my career, yes. I attribute to Dr. Dipanchu. Yes. Dipanchu, if you are listening, I owe it to you. <laughs> and bro, I have told you this before and I have no qualms in repeating it again. Yes, sir. Next is, who would be Virat Kohli of our team? Who would be aggressive and should charge to the opponent and can beat anyone at any time? Ah, uh, Virat Kohli, of course. GRG, sir. Oh, great. <laughs> there is no uh, comparison, you know. Uh, yes. He has all those qualities. Yeah. So Not GRG, that, sir. He's also a good cricketer, right, sir? I've he seen himself his is a good cricketer. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Correct. Yes, yeah, yes. absolutely. GRG, sir. Undoubtedly. Next is, who will be Bumrah of our team? Who will bowl deadly Yorker and kill the opponent? <laughs> uh, Marwa, sir. Yes. <laughs> He's good. Yeah. Um, He's that... Uh, just as Bumrah made the bowling very exciting... Yes, sir. Marwa, sir, makes the medicine subject very exciting. And uh, he's a superstar. Yes. Of course, you know that. Yes, sir. Yes. And therefore, yeah, I would say he... he yeah, can he be has been Bumrah. in the podcast earlier. The last episode was actually with the Marwa, sir. Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes, 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 yes. I got it. Yeah, yeah, yes. Next question for you, sir, in the imagination series is, suppose you have the chance to travel into the time machine and you are able to go to the past. So at what time period you will go where there will be some significant scientific discovery is happening? Uh, There are two of them. One is, of course, uh, the Werner Frostman, who's uh, credited with first cardiac catheterization. I would like to, uh, I would like to witness that procedure that he did on himself as the first cardiac catheterization. So the period, I guess, 1928. Okay. That was the time period. And, uh, uh, you know, the story goes like this, that he was an uh, intern in his hospital. And by that time, only this much knowledge was available that anything put into the vein will lead to the heart. Yes. So he took a catheter and he put it into, into the vein and he advanced it. There was nobody as a supporting staff. He was doing it upon himself Mm -hmm. and the catheter got stuck somewhere in the clavicle region. 
then he went upstairs running upstairs in his hospital because he wanted some radiological guidance to yeah. further that catheter i want to i want to witness that entire scene you know if yeah. i go into the time machine i mean uh, back into the time yes and then he finally advanced that catheter uh, then he did it five six times then he was fired from his institute uh, then he set up his own lab and finally in 1946 I think he got Nobel Prize for that cardiac catheterization. Yeah. But this is uh, something which is the other one is uh, little even back uh, uh, even going into further past. Sir Stephen Hales, yeah. I would like to witness that thing. Okay. Sir Stephen Hales is the first one to measure the blood pressure or put forward the idea of blood pressure. Okay. He was a clergy, Reverend Stephen Hales. Yes. And uh, he had. Uh, lots of uh, horse and mares uh, in his backyard so one of the mare which is a she horse fell sick so he introduced one glass tube into his major artery some some i think carotid artery imagine the horse is lying down glass tube is a very long glass tube inserted into the artery and then he saw that the column of blood rose above the ground 8 feet 3 inches okay. against gravity that is when he thought that how come the blood is going up that high against gravity that means the blood must be flowing with some amount of pressure yeah and that is when the idea of blood pressure came into existence this right. was in the 1700s oh ha huh. william harvey had just discovered the circulation okay. and this is that post circulation discovery period but uh, there are photographs of this available of uh, not photographs the pictures not yeah. photograph yes. the pictures of this available uh, which tell us the story and it's very interesting and exciting story so i would like to witness that also great to know about <laughs> that sir next question is if you are stuck up in the island and you have only three things to take along with you what they would be sir my ipad my charger and a uh, battery of the ipad i mean uh, <laughs> you bank. are saying the things yeah power <laughs> bank because uh, all the time i'm working on my ipad creating the content or uh, writing the notes or putting the stuff on social media so it is it has become an inseparable part and therefore yeah it would be ipad okay thank you sir my next question is we know that in all of your videos there are lot of correlation with the bollywood and cricket right so to be a great teacher really we should have that bollywood and cricket background what do you think sir yeah see uh, i'll tell you about my videos first social media content look uh, in india three fields get instant recognition politics uh, cricket and bollywood yeah film stars these three are the uh, biggest uh, people yeah in india right uh, they get most recognition and i had interest in all these three fields <laughs> from the beginning so it came naturally to me yes. whether it's cricket or bollywood or or even politics for that matter um so yes i am a bollywood directory and uh, <laughs> i i i remember i watched a movie called jalwa which was a nasiruddin shah starer movie yeah and i used to like that song jalwa in yes. that and a dialogue okay that one one police commissioner telling the other police commissioner about nasiruddin shah that you don't know this guy ye matlab jahan kahin koi ummeed bhi nahi dehti na wahan pe ye ummeed nikal ke apne jalwe dikhata hai right to ye dialogue mujhe itna pasand aaya ki main three shows ek din mein dekha tha <laughs> ye movie ke yes aur aisa lagta tha ki kisi din na mere liye logo ne ye kehna chahiye i saw you know i used to take inspiration from such small dialogue small yes. things in bollywood yes, yes yes that people should be talking about me like this ki kya iska jalwa hai yaar yes sir. kya padhata hai ya anything yes, yes sir aapka jalwa hai sir nahi nahi ye to main aise hi keh raha tha but but ye lagta tha aur isliye you know bollywood movies bhi dekha to har cheez dimag mein baith jati thi aur phir abhi agar aisa hai ki these fields are making impact on our lives तो मैं स्टूडेंट्स को फिजियोलॉजी पढ़ाते वक्त भी उसी लैंग्वेज में बताऊं तो जल्दी कनेक्ट हो जाएगा उनको अच्छे से समझ में आएगा एंड इट बी गुड दैट्स व्हाई आई टेक अप दोज थीम्स फॉर द वीडियोस या इट्स ग्रेट सो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज हाउ डू यू 
keep yourself fit <laughs> you would be around 50 45 53 53 nobody yeah. would imagine sir you look like 35 yeah. 30 ha yeah. yeah so some people tell me that yeah i don't look like that yes. age so what the secret behind that sir uh my secret is two three things yes sir but most important secret is no negative emotions whatsoever you know negative emotions will make you old very fast they release stress hormones or whatever they release but they make you appear old very quickly uh so nobody will relate that many students i mean thousands of students know me from my institute nobody will ever relate me with these negative emotions like jealousy dislike hatred uh unhappiness dwesh irsha they always see me cheerful and happy yeah and uh, yes that keeps a person youthful so that's the secret yes. of course it's not easy because yes. if somebody i'll give you an example there was one young doctor came in our department joined our department uh till that point of time i was the king you know Hospital. students used to students used to admire me i was the boss of my subject this person this doctor came in dr vakas i can name him of course and in no time he became popular not only that he began to surpass my popularity <laughs> now uh what should i feel about it i mean uh, normally there would be jealousy. a jealousy a sense of insecurity yeah. but i had always had uh and you can verify this from dr vakas sure, i used sure. to adore him also uh for his all the qualities and his popularity um dr vakas if you are listening <laughs> uh so i told him that it's good that you came here i was tra- i had started believing that uh, nobody can surpass me in teaching and my popularity mm-hmm. but uh, he came and in very less time he became very popular so now my approach was okay i have the qualities i have the merit now i will further improve my quality of teaching i will put in more hard work and it will be a healthy competition and who will benefit students will benefit yes. they will get the best of teaching yes so that is how i thought so that and is the first thing yes, yes. so positive thinking yes. or in every situation what is second secret um second secret is i am a content person in life that also keeps me young mm-hmm. content and grateful yeah people associate these two qualities with me i am a grateful person even if somebody has done something for me in uh, i mean 30 years ago i forever feel grateful about that person yeah so we all and, should be like that ha huh, and that gives a certain amount of peace yes uh and keeps me young yes sir <laughs> <laughs> okay sir my next question is in the earlier days students were very sincere pretty sincere about their studies in the colleges they used to attend lectures but nowadays it's all about distractful uh, everybody has all the resources on the mobile so what changes do you think should be uh, brought to this education system the education system has changed forever now yes sir uh back in those days 1988 when i was in first year वो तो अभी पिछले किसी जन्म की बात लगती है यार किसी कोई पिछला जन्म ऐसे व्हाट व्हाट एवर देयर वाज वन बुक फॉर एवरी सब्जेक्ट एंड वन टीचर नॉट वन टीचर बट यू नो क्लासरूम दैट्स इट दैट्स ओनली सोर्स ऑफ योर इंफॉर्मेशन एंड द बुक नथिंग एल्स देयर वाज नो मोबाइल फोन्स आल्सो सो नो डिस्ट्रैक्शंस एंड या सो वी हैड टू अटेंड कंपलसरीली एंड गेट ऑल द नॉलेज slowly now what has happened is um, there is knowledge explosion now and knowledge is available at the fingertips yes. now it is ai yes people are i launched one app which is ai based app yeah. people are asking me can we save these answers which we asked to the ai mm-hmm. so they don't want to open the textbooks hmm. they just want this quick shortcut yes and the second is uh, uh, the uh, the attention span yes we could sit for 12 hours a day for lectures now the attention span is 30 seconds reels, reels. that's it 
so that's why i have to also make the reels <laughs> because the attention span is very less yes i never saw before i mean previously that the students getting up and walking out of the lecture hall okay. now at least in last 2 years a student gets up in the middle of the lecture and just walks out and then comes back in after 5 10 minutes yes. i mean uh, i think this is because of the online teaching that covid period na post covid period online teaching used to be there so people used to just uh, keep the camera on oh, yeah. or that line on they would walk out then come back who is going to watch na so i think uh, that habit now they have brought into the classrooms also <laughs> and they had now walk out just come back in uh, without uh, feeling uh, the respect for the teaching person yes. but that's that this is going to be there mm-hmm. now this is the culture and teachers and everybody has to adopt to it yes sir so make uh, small teachings i mean uh, make concepts easier and feed them to the students yes. that's how it should be i think teachers yeah. will have to adapt to it okay yes and uh, my next question is sir i knew that many of your apps are for free right yeah and so i also prefer to one of the app that is vxx physiology app during my pg preparation days yeah so so why why these apps you keep for free uh it's really means obviously uh, all of the audience will think that this is some kind of pr activity but i'm just asking out of the curiosity that everyone at some point wants to earn some money in life and the uh, sir's background sir is already known to a lot of students so there is no way that he could be keeping content for free right so I just wanted to ask it out of curiosity ah, okay. that how you manage okay. to keep it for free sir yeah it's not a pr exercise it is really uh, a question which is being asked by many people yes how can you afford Yeah. keeping these apps free mm-hmm. because making of an app needs a lot of money yeah and keep it running uh, also needs a lot of money because you have server uh, charges and lots of things and then i'm giving it free there are no sponsors if you see there are yes. no sponsors to my app nothing i am sponsoring my apps yes. that's because uh, by god's grace god has been kind to me i came from a, a healthy background in the sense that uh, dad was a uh, industrialist i am a second generation entrepreneur hmm. we belong to the pharma business com- uh, this yes. so uh, money was uh, i mean uh, was there i mean i uh, it, it was it was not an issue that i should earn so uh, to keep the life going yes god has been really kind to me on this uh, in this then came the physiology teaching and uh, i got so much from the subject and from the students yes then i started feeling the need to give it back to the students and to the subject that is where this whole idea of free apps came yes that uh, this is my giving back to the society to the students to the subject yes sir my next question is for you sir nowadays you are seeing there is a essential need to be active on the social media all of the doctors are creating content on the social media even the teachers are making content on the social media and perhaps uh, my dream is again to be a educator so at the, after my residency only i started teaching on the instagram so i know you might have came across this but is there definitely need for this social media campaigns what do you think about of course this? of course social media increases your outreach your digital footprint increases you get the recognition in fact i tell you when you were about to join dy patel uh, uh you had applied for the post and dean sir called me and show, uh, told me that here is dr vishal he is apply he is applying here he is already a social media influencer with 3.5 lakh followers <laughs> big following he is a star social media star at uh, such a young age uh, so you already became a talking point even before you had joined the institute yes sir. you were about to join and i was looking forward to meeting you you know <laughs> when did, when it's, do i get the chance to meet you to, no. uh, <laughs> this is you, honest uh, so uh, yes when you said sir abhi will make a podcast i felt it privilege that i am uh, i mean there is a social media influencer such a star and he is going to take uh, uh, i mean record a podcast with me i felt more privileged so why 
it's because of your digital footprint it's because of your uh, presence in the social media and the effective content that you are producing yes sir so yes hats off to you i mean because the content is effective you are getting a lot of following yes sir. so uh, yeah you are going to be a star just remember me <laughs> sure sir it's nothing like that just wanted to do something sincerely for the student yeah. that was only the uh, primary goal yes. and never thought that i would get such a good response and all the medical student are like a family for all of us right so we all want to work for each other and definitely we want to support each other as well so if you guys are interested in creating any sort of content you can reach me any time or sir also any time sir is really helpful and we all can help you and prevail together right so that's how the life goes on but it 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 uh... it is a hell lot of an expenditure i tell you <laughs> yeah yeah i can't yeah, put exact uh, figure but uh, yeah. it is it is a heavy expenditure yeah sir but it gives me satisfaction that yes. students gave me a lot mm. students gave me a lot now it's my time to give it back yes sir yes. thank you for being so kind to all of us sir <laughs> and really means it's actually a privilege for us to have that uh, that sort of resources for free right yes Okay, sir. So my next question is: When you started journey as a teacher in physiology, who were your first students, or do you recall the first batch? <laughs> yes. In fact, my first student is now my current dean, <laughs> uh, D.Y. Patel Medical College, Nehru, where I'm working. Yes, sir. Since my start of my career, I am. I do belong there uh, to the D.Y. Patel Institute, and uh, uh, my first batch had the. I had a very illustrious and a brilliant student, mm -hmm. Dr. Rajiv Rao, and he is now currently the dean of the institute. I saw him grow. I can tell you the story. By the time of first internal exam and the way he performed, uh, I had put a bet on him, really, literally, that this boy will top uh, top the university and he might break the records also, and he did. He did really. i tell you one of the finest minds that i have seen yes sir brilliant yes, and sir. i am his fan for that yes sir uh you know intelligence is one thing and wisdom is another thing this ma man uh, is a combination of both and he has a vision yes, so he is my first student or let's say student of my first batch so yes i recall yeah great <laughs> to know about that sir yes yeah next question is sir who are your three idols in the life whose philosophy you follow till date um well uh first is my father he passed away in 2017 but i call him living god or moving god and people who have met him they also get the same feeling a godly feeling or saintly feeling and he gave me one uh philosophy in life he said success is not a spontaneous combustion you have to burn yourself yes and he used to explain to me see it's not a spontaneous combustion it's not a combustion reaction that will happen spontaneously you have to burn yourself you have to sub do something he used to always quote me uh, dadichi rishi's story dadichi rishi was fighting with the i mean uh, alongside the uh, suras or devas and asuras were to be defeated and yagya was going on in yagya they have to put in the, those samidhas so dadichi rishi gave his own uh, own uh, bones as samidhas in that yagya just to defeat uh, the asuras this is a story fine but then the story uh, tells us that you have to do these ultimate sacrifices if you have to uh, uh, achieve something in life yeah. so you have to burn yourself and the second part is you have to burn yourself yeah you know it will not happen just very casually success will come uh, come about you have to burn yourself literally into that arg of uh, that uh, uh, subject of yours or career of yours so i i mean that was the that is the first person that uh, i will always remain close to my heart when he passed away for a few for some time i felt i would not be able to live anymore i was so emotionally attached to him really sorry to hear that sir um but uh, yes one has to the life has to go on show must go on yes sir. 
द सेकेंड पर्सन दैट वॉट वॉज द क्वेश्चन ना अच्छा ओके या सेकेंड पर्सन हू आई हू इज माई रोल मॉडल इज आवर ऑनरेबल चांसलर सर ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर विजय पाटिल सर आई कैन आई कैन टेल यू अ स्टोरी वेन आई जॉइन इन नाइनटीन नाइंटी फाइव एज अ ट्यूटर इन डी वाई पाटिल मेडिकल कॉलेज इट वॉज ओनली सिक्स ईयर्स ओल्ड एंड वी यूज टू गेट द कॉल्स फ्रॉम द सिटी बैंक और दिस और दैट कॉल सेंटर आस्किंग फॉर क्रेडिट कार्ड डू यू वॉन्ट क्रेडिट कार्ड डू यू वॉन्ट लोन देन दे वुड आस्क मी वेर डू यू वर्क सर आई वुड से डी वाई पाटिल इट वॉज अ न्यू इंस्टीट्यूट बैक देन सो सो दैट सो दैट पर्सन ऑन दी अदर एंड वुड से वॉट विच विच इंस्टीट्यूट सर वॉट इज इट सर डी वाई दिव्या वॉट इज इट सर नो बडी वुड नो और नॉट मेनी पीपल न्यू अबाउट इट now cut to 2007 2005 6 7 now i'm again working in the dy patel as lecturer or ap and uh, i would get calls uh, saying sir do you want uh, credit card do you want loan do you want this do you want that and they would ask us sir we would say that you know sir we are not doctors we are lawyers we are not doctors we are lawyers we are not doctors we are not 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 lawyers we are not doctors we are Ravi Shastri had described it as the fifth best stadium. Yes. Sir. Uh, you have your own university. You have a fantastic campus. This transformation from the nineteen ninety five to uh, to this two thousand four, five, six, seven, and to this stage of twenty twenty four, when it is the best institute in private colleges, or best institute otherwise, I give credit to our honourable chancellor sir. He is my role model. I tell you. because i see a lot of things in him and i try to follow yeah. one of them is single minded pursuit of your goal you decide a goal and then single mindedly pursue that goal put your resources there and make the best result possible that is what i mean therefore uh, i just simply adore him i i i can talk endlessly about him <laughs> he is my role model yes sir you know uh, look at the campus whenever anybody class. anybody comes in the campus first time and say uh, i want to take admission here i want to study here yes that's yes. superb and uh, i give credit to i mean uh, uh, who am i to give credit i am yes. too small uh, i feel this entire transformation was possible because of uh, dr vijay patil sir's uh, vision yeah he has that vision yes absolutely my role model yes <laughs> thank you for letting us know about your idols in your life sir my last question is who do you like to thank in your life um look uh this uh, there are so many people who i would like to thank to my mother is my force multiplier my sister is uh, a, an elite kind of a person i would like to in my difficult times she was always there so my elder sister jyoti uh my other sister ujwala they have always supported me uh in my difficult times they are elder to me by 9 years and 10 years respectively so yes i feel a sense of gratefulness my persona which has developed lot of uh, the uh, the credit goes to those two sisters of mine but uh, the biggest gratefulness that i feel is uh, towards my better half i don't know how many of you will take in what way i don't uh, but uh, dr mrs bharti my better half and uh, the reason is that you know you can make it big in life and career if your back end means your house and family is peaceful yeah it provides peace and mental support to you you know i used to travel to take neat pg lectures all over india i would get up at 3 am in the morning to catch a flight and travel to some corner of india uh, she would get up for no reason i would have traveled i i'm going to travel by myself all by myself but she would get up uh, make some tea and she would say travel safely and very peaceful person everybody is fond of her in our department in our college so that is my greatest source of strength in yes, life yes. and i am eternally thankful to her yes and my son after he was born 
that is the time when i grew in started growing in my career yes sir. so you know a good like a good omen or <laughs> good fortune he came yes yes yes, yes. these two people yes, yes definitely i am grateful yes sir thank you so much uh, for being here with us sir today finally i would like you to address something to our students who are medical students preparing for either neat pg exams neat super special exam or fmj exam so please sir your final message final message be passionate just two words yes sir whatever you are doing in life be passionate about about that thing yes sir if it studies yes take derive pleasure from your studies faltu ke liye padhna seekho you know most of you all are studying for exams only when there are exams you start studying don't do that faltu ke liye padho study for the sake of studying mm-hmm. not for anything else and when you start deriving pleasure out of it you are on on course for a big success in life because then study will not be a bore okay otherwise many people just remain rootless wonders you know i would say grow the roots in your personality be a strong personality and be passionate whatever you do be with a lot of passion and emotion into it and see the success will be at your feet thank you so much for your time on this beyond the white coat podcast sir your journey is truly inspirational and a learning lesson for all of us and we are definitely inspired through it so lastly i would like you to give final message to the audience so many of our students our neat pg students uh neat ug students then fmg students so they would like to hear something from you vision keep a vision for you where you want to see yourself in next 5 10 years 15 years second passion uh, work passionately tirelessly and dedication so vision passion and dedication uh, to your efforts these three sutri will bring you bring success to you